get ready to rumble. Thanks for staying tuned. Thanks for sticking with us. As it did take again a little while to get this game set up. But it's game number one of this best of five series. And this one I think is a bit closer than the previous. That said, the man in the bottom right hand side of the map, the Red Zerg player, True, is already on a bit of a rampage. And he's going up against the Blue Cross player from Cascade DNS top left. He's been playing very well this weekend. And it'll be interesting to see how they all line up after today. See who's going to advance through into that round of eight. Um, WCS rankings, by the way, it's getting very, very close between a bunch of players. Obviously, I think at this point, Showtime, Scarlet are the players to watch out for in terms of being able to come on through and being able to essentially uh, still kind of advance if they win this event. They'll be able to qualify straight to BlizzCon. And in that scenario, True has to make sure he gets above Snoot, who is still in the running as well. So he basically has to try and make sure he can run through and make it through that uh, section of the bracket. My phone was not was not muted. What a shame. HJP Alpha coming through. Jade, what's up? Twenty one dollars. Wow, holy crap! Big donation coming through. It says absolutely nothing. Just donates the twenty one dollars. If only the bit boss fucking worked with donations. It's so annoying, man. See, this is why we need to get rid of Bit Boss and bring the Stream Boss on. I think it's kind of sad because the Bit Boss was a really cool idea done by a guy, but I mean, obviously it's become very popular, and now it's been, you know, Streamlabs have made their own version, and basically everyone's going to use it. It's kind of sad, but um, but yeah. But thank you so much for the twenty-one dollars. Can you get some love in the chat for HJP Alpha? Bit Boss is for bits. Well, that's why the Stream Boss is coming, because then it's for the stream. You're just, you're just afraid, Merle. You're just afraid of people with, <laughs> without bits going to be able to compete, right? <laughs> very, very much for the $21 donation. Get some Morty Hearts in the chat, please. Very, very much do appreciate the love. As we do set up here, as we were saying, True had a good performance back in Valencia. He went out to laser in the round of eight, or was it round of four? I can't quite remember which way around it was actually in Valencia. Let me have a quick peek. Let me also close my um, stream here. So I am all over the place right now. If Valencia True went out in the round of, I think it was round of four, right? Yeah, he went out to a laser three one. He beat Serral in the round of eight. That's who he beat. I remember now. Yeah, but he went out to a laser. I remember he went out to a laser. I just couldn't remember if it was round of four or round of eight. But of course, it was a laser that beat Nurture in the round of eight. So so many ZBZs to remember. So yeah, True's coming in off a strong performance in Valencia. Has been looking very good again lately. Second place in WCSNA Challenger. And uh... Yeah, we're just going to be setting up into this. Just going to be seeing the... Stargate on the way out. Let me get this ready to go. Oracle on the way up. DNS, I mean, again, we can't give up kind of how DNS has played this weekend so far as well. Uh, I can't actually remember who he beat in group stage three. Who did he come out against? He lost to Serral. I remember Castanachi, but he beat Cypher and Pilly Pilly to advance into the round of 16 here. But just still a kind of a very solid run through the bracket to get to the round of 16 where he meets True. He took down Special as well back in the group stage uh, two. And I think that's one of the big highlights of his run so far. Special has been a top eight contender all season, all year. As we are just going to be seeing the Oracle just coming on over. So Oracle comes over, has a little bit of a look around. And these couple of queens are going to be uh, pushing back. So Oracle is going to take some damage here. I'm just going to get pushed away early. The early builds just again very standard. True is going to drop a few links into the main. He's going to do a melee upgrade. He's making more links as well. As he comes in, starts to look for some damage here early on already. A couple of probes going to start taking some hits. Then jump back in towards that overlord here as we're gonna see again. Those Zerglings looking around to see if they can do something else. A couple of adepts gonna turn those lings away. Next is not gonna go down there as we see the dodge. Just sat on the wall and well again true just applying pressure with what is again a lot more lings than you might usually see at this stage of the game. Does DNS have what he needs to turn this away? Because he does once again have lings in his main base to deal with. It looks like he's gonna be able to do that. Phoenix is out to push the overlord back. And DNS seems very calm and collected here. Continues to hold on. He might very well lose this cyber next call. This Oracle really needs to come in and 
Stop pushing those links back. Okay, he's gonna keep it alive. Still two adepts down on this low ground. Again, the Oracle is uh, gonna be, as soon as the links commit somewhere, he'll pop the Pulsar Beam and really start to make his way through this. Some good adepts taking some hits uh, through that pylon there. We all gonna see the Cyber Call will get picked away at, so that does go down. Meanwhile, Twilight and the Forge is still building here. The Oracle's committed to Pulsar Beam, so we'll try and get a little bit more damage done on those Zerglings. True, going to be pushed away, but I really feel like this for DNS was a very good hold. A very uh, solid hold here so far. You can see those things continue to move around. They actually keep stopping and starting to the point where I was like, is my screen pausing? It's kind of a bit weird, but true. Just going to trill. I mean, he still has these links. He still wants to make something of them. He's going to try and get through, but it is a full wall off still. And I mean, again, DNS, a good hold. He was kind of ahead on economy throughout this because of the way that the Zerg works. If you make units instead of drones, then, uh, yeah, if you make units instead of drones, then obviously you're going to be giving up some eco. And that's a little spike that Drew has right now. It's just because DNS is transferring down to his third base. Everything should be fairly even at the moment. Fire executes on the way, and that transition into charge and plus one. Fourth hatchery drops down to the far right hand side as well. Gonna be seeing the plus four missiles and the road speed coming up too. Nine more roaches building up for true. And there's nine more roaches build up. Just gonna be seeing these couple of results and a couple of adepts. From DNS is gonna join up out the front as well. Some Zerglings will take the left hand side watchtower. That's gonna hold this location here and see what they can do next as we will see the war prism. Gonna grab four zealots and start moving forwards. So again, Prism coming down towards the bottom right side. The yeah, NS wants to apply some pressure here earlier as you can see this charge. About to finish up the plus one as well. And True going to start going into Roaches now, which is a bit of a weirder way to play this. He's actually really looking for just massive low-tech units rather than playing kind of the Ling Bane Hydra that you might usually expect to see. They might just be catching or maybe able to catch DNS a bit off guard. You see a lot of charge into the main. The double Oracle here will come in to help out. Fuse Zelda into the mineral line, the Queen's running around trying to stay alive. Nice transfuse is being used, and the Zelda's are going to get taken down, but I still feel the trade fairly well. You know a lot of Roaches drop, and he sees it's Mass Roach as well, which is very good information, because he now he knows to focus up on producing some Immortals. DNS will lose out on these Zelda's, but Immortals on the way. Temple Archive's coming through too, he starts to work his way through these rocks. Roaches getting picked away, and we're going to be seeing a lot of links coming in towards the upper left hand side. Roaches coming on over as well to see what else they can do here in the next few moments. Charge comes down as Zergling takes a quick shot. Two shots coming down actually. You can see the Roaches able to pick off that pylon. So pylon does fall here, and then there's Roaches of True. You want to be coming on over. You're going to be seeing the Roaches going to continue to take a bunch of damage as well. So Roaches keep on dropping. This Stargate is actually going to take quite a bit of damage as well. I think the problem for DNS is that he just doesn't have immediately enough years to deal with this, but another mole does pop out. The Archon's doing a great job tanking so far with the Warp Prism Micro. He's maintaining a lot of these units for a lot longer than he maybe should usually. The problem is he's still going to run out of kind of... Well, he's still going to run out of answers here eventually, perhaps. More Zelda warp in to try and help protect the mortals as those roaches continue to make their way through into the natural expansion. Now going to push up in towards the main base. You see Zelda's continue to chase and those roaches continue to drop. So i still moving forward as well. Another shot onto that Overseer. Three, six workers going down now. Up to seven workers killed, eight workers killed. Things from the south side are going to try and run by the third base. DNS trying desperately to keep on holding on. Really feels with a big warp in the main. I like the idea about the time, but looking at this now, it really feels though maybe just because he went for that massive warp and he didn't quite have enough back at home later. And maybe is kind of one of the kind of causes of him having such an issue trying to hold this off at the point. We've seen this Voidu trying to help out some extra Zalots too. But the problem is more and more workers are dropping. DNS is starting to fall apart. And true, his mass Ling, his mass Roach has been starting to win him out in this game. Number one to take the lead in the series. So have a few Roaches in the main base which are picking their way through the mortal at the moment. This is Roach going to come in and a few more probes will drop down as well. And there's a lot of push forwards and Roach is still getting pushed on back. Order here as well, a couple more Zergs going down, that Roach also getting popped, another Overseer does drop down dead, just like that. And well, I mean, okay, DNS is cleaned up here and there, he might clean up the entire army, but he's going to be down 25 workers. His army supply won't be great, 
And now there's a transition coming in from True, which is that to move into Hydras, and that transition into high attack, attack which can really be justified being used later in the game, that's going to create issues here for the you know, for the uh, for the Protoss player because now he's going to have his opponent not just economy ahead, but with a composition of justify it moving onwards. Burrowed up to the upper left hand side, and we are going to be seeing Hydralists of True starting to come through the center. So as Hydra's joining up again, this entire army is going to send ready to go. The Phoenix will get taken down. So we'll just pop back up in the main. Not really much going on. The mill is apparently left in the game. As you can see there. I mean, to be fair, I mean, Deanna is stabilizing a little bit. He isn't making any more workers, though, which I'm a little bit concerned about. He's staying on this fairly low-wish work account for himself. And I'm not sure, you know, really why. Why stay on 39 when you can re kind of you know, resaturate your natural, resaturate your main? Especially from the gases. I mean, the lack of gas is only going to hurt him. So I'm going to run forward to the no hull position the initial Zealot, but the new Zealot's warped in will be on hull position, and that is a bit of a savior. be able to... Keep him alive there in a situation of, well, in a situation that was a little bit scary, honestly. And we'll split themselves up a little bit, and now we're just going to be seeing these hiders and roaches coming back over toward the left hand side. More roaches and things setting up in the center. And those units just gathering on up. Getting ready to push them forward once again towards the upper left hand side. Eight more roaches on the way out. The plus two melee upgrade is on the way out as well. Push on forwards. And you've seen True getting ready to break through the natural expansion. So, immediately running on in here, we're going to be seeing these couple of gateways going to go down. I mean, here comes DNS with the defense, but he's been so far behind on workers for so long. Can he really fight against this Roach Hydra army? For a little while, it looks as though he maybe could have done, but again, he fell far behind. And because of that, he is going to be losing out here. GG, True. Take Guys, thanks for sitting for a quick little break there as we get set and ready to roll into. Top left hand side of Abyssal Reef. Our red Zerg player is true. He's going up against DNS. Our blue Protoss player bottom right here is down a game now in this best of five. Falling apart to the hyper aggressive playstyle of true in the last series. It's a difficult one to deal with. It's not something that most Zergs would usually play, and you're not as well practiced against it. You can definitely find some issues because of it. But, um. Yeah, I feel like it should be, uh... Yeah, I, I, it's definitely something you can hold. It's not impossible to hold, or every Zerg would be doing it. It's just a matter of figuring it out, and, you know... It's one of those things which I don't think works twice in this series. I don't think DNS falls apart to two times back-to-back. -back. I think it's something that Drew now has to kind of leave alone. Okay, he used it to get his first win. You know, the answer is just making more Immortals, making more Archons, and making them earlier rather than committing into... Again, like, a ton of Zealots, which don't do a lot. You know, Zealots, you know, even Zealots kind of against those roaches are not the best in general, so... It is just about kind of making sure you gather together. Sitting defensively, fighting with your pylons, positioning well, not, you know, splitting up your army if necessary. And so on, and so on. Thank you very much, Andy Man, by the way, coming in for the cheer 100. Thank you very much. Do you appreciate it? So we have this overall true. Just continue to come through the center. Cybercore is about halfway done as well here for DNS, so Cybercore about halfway done. We'll just continue to set up in towards this. I mean, early game, really not much to talk about. Two minutes in, both players have been setting up as we could pretty much expect them to. No major surprises right now. We'll just wait to see where it goes from here, of course. Depth on the way out as we do see this probe from DNS. Then we come all the way back around the right hand side just to get back home. So there's the two base Zerg, no third hash just yet. Then again, we are only two and a half minutes in game, so no need, you know, no immediate need for a third hatchery just yet either. And as we do see this drone, gonna pop out from true. I'm gonna start moving around elsewhere onto the map.
I mean, I've got that uh, the deputy of DNS is going to move over to the left-hand side. Hatchery is in place, and as the hatchery is in place, of course, he's not going to be able to do too much about it. Warp gates on the way down from DNS as well. Just going to see this probe of DNS moving around between the main natural. Really not. Really just waiting to see what happens, right? I mean, his dog gets down. It's just a slow start. PVZ is one of these matchups for me where I do feel as though the first few minutes are some of the most repeatable, repeat, repeatable. You know, they're the most, you know, they're very similar time and time again, so. Let's, uh. Let's see what's gonna happen. Oracle about to pop. And meanwhile, there's a depth just moving over to the side. I'm just gonna be seeing if they can do a little bit of something. Only two of them, though, not really that many. And now, this Oracle gonna come in towards the upper left. This tree's first third hatchery just finished. Very calm, slow paced game. Really, really not even kind of a couple of things. Moving on to the map. It's really been very calm. He wasn't even being lost. One single Zergling went down. Well, here we go. Oracle comes in, but already Queen's just deflecting it. It's losing its shields already. It may not really want to commit in to find much damage if the Queens are still here. He will pop Pulsar Beam. Doesn't get a single kill though. Good uh, defense. Use those drones to. Pulled away if ever onto the mineral line. Couple more queens on the way out. And those extra queens come out, plus one melee comes on through. And we are just going to be seeing the. Uh, we're just going to be seeing the. Uh, oracles. A couple of them are still coming up top. True good defense then. Again, this time he didn't make the massive circling, so he's already playing it very differently to the last game. He's not applying a whole bunch of pressure like he did last time around. No, you know, as quickly. So taking it much slower, he's gonna see a couple of dropper lords from True gonna start morphing in though. Maybe just maybe he's done with making workers, and maybe he's just gonna go full dropper lord all in. Two queens here gonna try and push the Oracles back. They can dive in and get a few workers though when there's two of them before taking too much damage. I mean the queens are looking to load up into the overlords and this is just coming off of so many more workers than I expected to. 47 workers, and we're going to see the Queen drop Ling all in coming across the map. I mean, the Queens are very important because it means that if a Voidray comes up defensively or something, he can push it away. Do you actually see two Oracles in the main base? No anti-air here for Drew, because he lifted all his Queens up, and all of a sudden DNS finds himself 16 workers. That's almost an entire mineral line. He's going to see on the natural no Queens as well, and I think he's going to have to start realizing here, True, that DNS, or DNS has to start realizing that True, He's got his queen somewhere. He's starting to make him all. He's starting to make a void. I don't like the void rate because of the queens. He did just build double robot. I'd much rather see a second immortal on the way up. Anyways, these things gonna start pushing in here in the initial force field. It's good to slow things down. The mothership core is very low energy though. And that will be an issue, of course. We're gonna see everything just dropping on top of you. The queen's coming in now. The sentries are beginning to fall. The problem is the oracles are not on a very high amount of energy, so they can't do a lot. The robot facilities are over here as well, so they're very exposed to be in kind of denied or something. A couple of times do just finish on DNS begin to use those to help him clean up. His oh, void rate comes on in and actually will start working his way through that overlord, which gets very low. The void rate goes down with Queens left inside. DNS is holding on. I mean remember he just did so much damage with the Oracles across the map that actually he is in a fairly decent position to stick around here. This immortal is trapped by the way. We'll be able to be lifted and escape via a I think it's trapped at least. If not he'll be able to be saved by a prison. Or maybe he just wants to keep it there. Anyways, more Ling's rushing forwards. Now is the issue. We kind of need to see some, like, you know, non immortal, some thing that can actually deal with the Ling's. Because now DNS is taking more and more damage. True is drawing up behind it. And it's this extra wave of Zerglings that's really doing so much here. He's actually going to kill one of his Robos to get those immortals out. He's going to see the Ling's coming into the main base. And Nashi's DNS still doesn't have anything. How did this turn around so quickly as we see probe after probe just dropping on down? True, it's absolutely massacring units right now. The natural expansion is still taking hits to the point where it might actually go down if DNS doesn't respond to it in the near future. True gonna cut away from those immortals to minimize the damage, okay, it doesn't fall. He'll go for a pile instead, the main nexus will fall. This was looking so good by DNS, but now he's just completely lost it. The immortals trapped behind, he didn't find himself enough warp ins to deal for Zerg, he let them flood through his ramp or his main base natural wall up, and that of course is disaster striking and DNS. Really from a very playable position, just sort of completely lost control of what was happening. Those three leagues will just get the guaranteed pro kill, gets two, gets three. Again, I mean, more pros he picks off, the better a game he's gonna have moving forward. He had 21 workers left of DNS as the final Zergling goes down against the 53 
throws off the tree. PVZ is less about strategy these days and more about getting punched in the face and seeing if you're still standing afterwards. I mean... I mean, Diana should have held this. And the thing is, if his Immortals weren't actually stuck, I actually think he probably does. Because even... I know Immortals aren't the best against things, but Immortals backing up a Zealot or two actually goes a long way. Dines is still in with a chance here. He can still counterattack, which is what he's going for right now. And he's going to hit the third base again. Pylon cannons all sorts going down here. The Zealots are kind of not going to last too long, though. And that just puts DNS even more all in with this army that is moving across the map. No war pins available. He doesn't have a war prism. And so let's see how this goes. We're going to be seeing five immortals. It's nothing to laugh about. It's a pretty serious army here that DNS is going to counter with. And it's very possible he actually gets damage done to maybe keep himself in this game. By the way, the Immortal is uh, getting to look through the Queen. Does he get a kill? The drone's going down, moving forward to the Angus. He doesn't commit, and the force field comes down, though. Now a couple of Ravagers are going to come out into play. Those of the at the front. Does connect on one of the Immortals there. More force fields are available. We'll use them to minimize the surface area there on those uh, lanes. Now, there's so many Ravagers coming through these units. The trap from DNS knows it as he taps on now to give true game two of this series. Click that and get a free subscription. And of course, if you aren't subscribed, it is half price because it is September on all new subs this month. So let's do this, guys. To the top left hand side as we go in game two, number three. Match point right here for our Red Zerg player representing Cystorm Gaming. Give it up for True. Bottom right hand side, the blue Protoss player is DNS. Is this me that sees this? Nexus is a little bit not joined up. Yes, guys, the Protoss is not distorted. Of course. Never really noticed that before. Alright, pro coming forward, so we are going to be seeing DNS just scouting in towards the natural expansion, which is just a hatchery first. Just checking this out and seeing what's happening. Natural gas pool though, and obviously not really much else to see from there. DNS just wants to play it safe, he just wants to make sure you're not 12 cool. I mean, you're not doing, you know, you're, not, you're not going full true. You have got a hatchery in your base, it's not proxied, for example. DNS 02 down does not want to lose the third game due to a. Uh, Quick, aggressive cheese or something. Probably still moving around here. This overlord is on the way up from True as well, and we do see the Nexus on the way down. He's natural. Jesus gets set up and rolling over the next few moments. Nexus on the way up, a couple of queens on the way out. And again, the first two minutes will be the you know, the, the setting of this game. We're we'll waiting, we just be waiting to see what the Cyber Next Core is now finished, what tech DNS will choose to go for. Again, back to that Stargate so far in this series. Does he change it up for the third game? Does he open DTs perhaps? You know, DTs would be something that would be actually very good against a lot of the attacks that True is going for. For example, the last game he has no lair. Without a lair, you don't have mobile detection, DTs just completely help to shut down those queens and they do help against the circles as well. So it could be a possibility, but no, DNS is going to go for the Stargate instead for the third game in a row. Just going to open in the same old way with the Oracle and see what we can do. Gambling's in the chat says, I want to see DNS try Mass Oracle. It'd be interesting. It's definitely a possibility as well. It's definitely a viable choice here for the uh, Protoss player. It's been from which has been in the PvC meta. Kind of since Valencia, actually, Haas. Just kind of making it kind of a thing, making it work. And we've seen a lot of it since then. Another two gateways on the way up, and there's a depth from DNS. Pulling back and just looking to see what it can do. Third hatchery is on the way up from true as well. Let's see. 
a little lava puffing out. And you want to see GSL this morning? I didn't, but apparently it was like really good. Don't don't spoil anything in chat, guys. But apparently it was really really good. If you guys didn't see it, I'm gonna have to watch it later today. Cause <laughs> when when you wake up and like the top six are StarCraft posts, are OMG GSL is amazing at the moment. You kind of know that GSL was kind of good. This Oracle doesn't do a lot, actually turns around to go back home. A few seconds left on the way through the third Nexus, but... Eh, the Depth comes forward, one is dead, I guess the Oracle as well is okay, the second Depth is okay, so... DNS is fine. A couple of these Depths do shade back, just slightly. And yeah, those Zergons are true, just moving around here, seeing what they can get up to. Seen what they can deal with, or what they can deal. Again, slow paced game for the first five minutes, not really a lot happening as we just wait for the ladder coming through. A melee upgrade as well, true play much more standard again this time around. I mean, I still keep an open mind because last game, true suddenly started dwarfing drop lords and went for that Ming Queen all in. But, 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 that was last game. This game, he might actually just play a straight up kind of Ling Bane Hydra sort of style. It is a possibility. Rotron going down though, so he'll play Ling Bane Roach maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll see still again. Send up into I mean Rotron but a melee upgrade. Definitely suggests still some sort of Ling Bane but, you know focus. Playing Roach instead of the Hydralisk is a uh, again kind of an outdated way to do it, but can still be effective if you can do it correctly and if you can take the right fights. It's kind of got a very similar idea to it as Ling Bane Hydra. The only issue is that um, there's got a lot of similarities to, to Link being Hydra, it's just that Link Hydra's generally are a little bit more useful. You actually see a Spire dropping down, oh my god, what's going on? So we're going to see like Link Muta. Hmm, I actually kind of like it. A way to change it up without kind of, and still not playing standard, without being totally crazy, because Mutas are definitely very viable. Spire on the way, one of the big things here from DNS would be trying to scout that Spire with this Oracle. We can get into the main and see this, this would be absolutely huge of course. That's why the Queens are positioned to the side. They do not want this Oracle to get in, and actually the Oracle getting very low. 2 HP left over. Does not go down, but already will be feeling afraid to go further in. They shouldn't really be looking to push on through, so right away. That's kind of a win for True, because now DNS is not going to be able to scout as easily. The idea that there is indeed a Spire on the way. Two Queens push in. We're gonna see that Oracle having to pull back through the top side. As well as Lens running forwards again, it's a good defense of DNS. It's not gonna allow anything to break him on the third. Problem is, he went double and Robo very early. He's building up Immortals. If the Lens actually fight, they will get one Immortal kill. I was gonna say is that the Immortals aren't gonna really add anything against this. It's DNS. He did scout that stuff by so he sees it. Now he knows. So he just started Merc Phoenix as a response. Only one Stargate though, a second one begins to build. One Phoenix at a time isn't going to be enough right here immediately. Fourth base on the way up from True begins to saturate. Fifth base will start to build as well. I love the idea of taking the fifth base soon after the fourth. Just in case one base goes down, you can go to the other so quickly and so easily. And especially in a style we're playing where it's kind of like, you know, mutiling is oftentimes goes towards those base trades. Already spreading out your units or your structures around the map is going to be kind of beneficial for you. So we just fly in, we already see probes are dropping, four workers killed. Phoenix takes another couple of shots, he'll actually turn and start to fight his way through these stalkers. One stalker goes down and a second stalker going down as well. Phoenix taking another shot or so, six workers dropping again. Seven workers going down. Again, there's Phoenix taking some more damage, 11, 12, 13 workers still dropping right here. 18 workers killed and 19. We just coming in once again and that's going to be just so many Phoenix still going down. And now you can get on top of the Stargate perhaps. Unpower it. There's only one single pylon on that Stargate. That would be absolutely huge. He's still moving around though. Just hasn't quite found the Stargates yet. Again, if he had found the Stargates, I really feel as though he should go towards it. He sees it actually. He sees only one pylon. I wonder why he doesn't feel the need to kind of really commit into it. It's true. Breaks down the rocks and now the Ling Mutas will be able to uh, push on forwards. Ling is going to start going through as he fights onto the natural expansion. Mutas are going to get rid of some of the stalkers here. Well, Phoenix have to back away, the micro obviously very important as 
Not a lot of things left over on the ground, but the mutants still in the sky are still going to be undeniably very powerful. Those Phoenix are getting lower and lower. Now that single pylon, he does find it, and he is going to start working his way for it, and that's going to be goodbye to further Phoenix production, just for another 20 or 30 seconds, and that, again, just slows DNS down in terms of being able to deal with all these riddles, as we can see right now. Well, pylon just get picked off. And the readers again just gonna have to pull back down towards this third base. Gonna be seeing the seconds running in the bottom cannon. We'll go down to the still flying around the readers. I'm just gonna be able to pick up just a little bit more here. Probes continue to drop. I actually think this might be game in already. 30 workers killed in the last few moments. On top of what happened before now, the ship goes down as he exits into the main base, but 18 workers left. I mean, this is just it, right? 41 workers down. There's something going down on the Zemus side of the map. It's a DT swiping away, being a bit of a nuisance. But for how long? Natural expansion goes down as True comes back over here. GG's called by DNS. True just.